In this video, we're going to go over basic general chemistry concepts that you should know, and most of this is probably going to be a review from stuff you learned in, like, elementary school. So first, let's get started with atoms and their structure. So in an atom, we have three components. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus of an atom, and electrons are located outside of the nucleus in what are called energy levels. So there are different energy levels with electrons in them, and the nucleus is in the middle of all of these energy levels. So it is like so. So we have our nucleus, which contains of our protons and neutrons. And surrounding the nucleus, we have various energy levels or energy rings or orbitals. And we have electrons on these various orbitals. So these are the electrons, also denoted like this. So protons and neutrons in the nucleus make up the mass of, make up almost the entire mass of the entire atom. And the protons are the are positively charged components, while neutrons are neutral, as hinted by the name. And electrons on on the outside are negatively charged. So this model that we have here, with these energy levels and the nucleus in the middle. That is the widely accepted model that is used today, and it is the Bohr model. Bohr model with all the energy levels. So the thing about these energy levels is that electrons can jump up to a higher energy level, and a higher energy level means it has higher energy. So electrons can jump up and be in an excited state. So if, they're an ex if they are excited, they move up an energy level and reach an excited state. And how do you excite an electron? You add either heat or other forms of energy, and that can excite an electron. And a way to remember this is that for us as humans to climb up a flight of stairs, let's say, we need to put in a lot of energy. Same way for the electron to climb up an energy level, they have to put in a lot of energy as well. Now, sometimes they can get excited for a brief amount of time, and then they'll quickly fall back down to a lower energy level. And when this happens, a photon is emitted. So this is the type of arrow that is used to denote the emission of a photon. So again, if we're going to jump up, we need higher energy. If we're going to jump down, we're going to release energy. So in other words, jumping up is endothermic and jumping down is exothermic. And I just realized I forgot to mention, when we have these various orbitals, the outermost electrons, so the electrons on the last and final orbital, are called valence electrons. So now let's move on and talk about how to identify atoms and get the basic information you need to know about them from the periodic table. So, we all know the shape of a periodic table. It looks vaguely something like this, and it's broken up. This is really messy, I'm sorry, but it's broken up into the various elements that are found in our Earth. So, Let's zoom in on a possible element. So say we have oxygen. This is how it's going to be denoted on the periodic table. So what does all of this mean? So this letter O is the symbol that symbolizes the name of the element, which is oxygen. And below it, we have the actual name of the element written down to make it easier for us. Now the number underneath is the atomic mass. And the number above, the 8, is the atomic number. 
So uh, the atomic number is the amount of protons in an atom. And the atomic mass is just what it sounds, it is the mass. But how do we get this mass? So we use something called the mass number. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the atom. And since each atom is available in various forms, such as isotopes, which I'll explain in a few minutes, um, because there are multiple different isotopes, the atomic mass is the average mass of all of the various isotopes. So what is an isotope? An isotope is an element, or isotopes are two, a pair of elements which, which have the same number of protons. So same number of protons, but they have a different number of neutrons. So let's say we have um, carbon. Usually carbon is found with an atomic um, number of 12. Uh, I apologize, atomic mass of 12 because carbon has six protons and usually the number of protons equals the number of neutrons. So we have six protons and six neutrons and six plus six equals 12, which is the mass number. But we don't have to just have C12. We can have C13 or C14 and C13 is going to have seven neutrons instead, but it's still going to have six protons. And C14 is going to have six protons, but eight neutrons. So these are the various isotopes. And we t when we take the atomic masses of all of these, oh, sorry, not the atomic mass, the mass number. When we take the mass number of all of these and find the average of that, that is when we get the atomic mass. So there you have it. This is just a basic introduction of the things you need to know in general chemistry.